Hello friends, myself Professor Vinod Pillai. Welcome to C++ programming session. In today's session, I'll be showing you how to sort an array using the concepts of template. We'll be covering in this session an overview of why we need the template. Secondly, we'll be creating some methods for the template uh, for sorting purpose. That is, uh, I need a method for sorting. I need a template method for swapping also and I'll create a template method for display. I'll show you what are the needs and how I have created and all those things. Then finally we try to sort an integer array. Then we'll try to sort an float array and at the end of the session we'll try finally how we can sort a student array using the same template concept. Okay, so we'll create the advantage of creating a template based sort array or bubble sort array is that in normal arrays you'll be have to again and again change the same code as per the data types so that is one of the advantages you get in templates I repeat it in templates is a concept of generic that means the data type is not fixed at the runtime whatever data type you are passing to the function or the method it will convert that particular function according to that so if suppose I will pass an integer array the complete function will be converted for an integer array if in case I'm passing an array of float type data type, the complete array will be converted for the float. Or else if I pass a student array, it the complete array will be converted for the student. So I hope so you have an over and overview understanding of the template. The basic understanding is needed for today's session. I'll not be explaining you what are the syntax and all. I'll be explaining you, I'll be more concentrating towards how to create the methods for the sorting the array. Let's get into the program. In the initial stage, I have just kept the, I have not included the student class. We'll first see simply with integer and float, then I'll include the student class. I'll explain the line by line what are the things are there. I've already coded it because it takes too much time in front of you to code and all. The video will be quite long. I don't want to do that. I'll explain you the major points. First is the include part, that is IO stream. Namespace, that is quite common. Okay, there comes my template. So I need a template type, so I declare template class T second comes every require only one array only so one data type only so i have kept the t only i don't need the second one the second argument when i am passing an array the two things i'll be passing one is my array and the second i'll be passing the size of an array definitely always the size will be an integer so i don't want to create a template type variable over there it's unnecessary unnecessary avoid those such things else it will take time so avoid my method name is my bubble sort T is the type whatever type I'm passing it will be convert it will be passed to this T and it will convert my array accordingly so if an integer is passed the so T will become here integer and my array of data type also becomes integer so assume uh, the T will be coming at runtime so array is my variable name integer size the size will be having the size of array simple for loop for the bubble sort I hope so you are having a knowledge of sorting how it is been done I'll just explain uh, briefly I equal to 0 I less than size minus 1 I plus plus integer J is equal to I plus 1 uh, J less than size and J plus plus if in case if array of I is less than array of J okay so there here I have to do the swapping concept now the problem is that I don't know what is the type of it and I don't want to create all the swapping concept here so I have created a swapping method over here okay so if in case you find this as complex you can copy this particular code over here it will still work fine okay I believe that if, if whenever possible you can break the codes wherever necessary it is so you can reuse the codes like you want to do swapping in some other functions you can do it instead of writing rewriting the codes and again so I've created another method called a swap here I'll be passing two values now, but obviously if suppose array one or the first argument of my array is of integer type definitely I'll be the my second argument will also be of integer type only so here also I need a class T single data type void my swap is my method name T is my data type so if suppose this is of integer type so this T also becomes integer if suppose I'm passing an array of float so T becomes float and array value becomes float so here swap will also get value T becomes float so I have used the reference concept okay because I want to have a reflect value over the actual values so if I make any changes to val1 it will be affected to array of i and j effects so I've created a reference I've created two variables val1 and val2 array i's value will be copied to val1 array j's value will be copied to val2 
simply have created a temporary variable here most of the times generally make mis student, students and people make mistakes in here when you create the temporary variable you have to make sure that it is also of generic type okay so you don't know the data type so I've created temp also of t type equal to val1 val1 equal to val2 that simple logic of swapping so this is the only thing you are to require for the sorting concept so the two methods I've created display uh, as per my requirements because here also the same problem comes because every time I create uh, an array I have to initially show what is the value after doing the sorting again I have to show the user that this is uh, the result after sorting and also again and again writing the same logic in my main method I've created another display method it's not required it's up to you whether you require this so swap and display is up to you okay but I feel it's quite easy after creating these two methods so again display is there same here also display same like an array okay I'll be passing him an array I'll tell him what is the size size will be of integer type so I've created an integer as second argument array will be copied to array okay so but obvious arrays data type will be not be known so I've created as t type I simply write c out slash n followed by less than size and c out the value of i okay so array will be printed okay so I hope so you have understood the three methods we have created an bubble sort method my bubble sort my swap method and my display method let's get into the main method simply I create an integer array I have uh, randomly kept some values five values I'm saying display array comma five so display my method will be called first of all the array type that is of integer type so t will become integer and this array will complete value will be copied to this array okay and the five will be copied to size and accordingly it will print the values after printing the value I want to do sorting I'm calling my bubble sort and similarly I'm passing array and file in this way here also same way as like in display the file will be copied to size array value will be copied to this initially the t will become of integer type because my array is of integer type after doing that I'll again I'm displaying it. similarly I've done for float and again I've displayed and called the bubble sort and I've displayed it let's see the output first and then we'll get into that so I'm already here I can see that I compile my this thing main method so and if you can see this is my first initially I'm having these values unsorted values and afterwards after doing that it is sorting the values and uh, I'm having unsorted float values after that it has sorted my float values so basically we can see that simply by creating a single or you can say one time function for bubble sort we can use it for multiple data types integer float double character or any of the data types so someone will ask like will it be successful if I pass a student array or any user defined class or a user defined data types okay so it will not be that easy but yes it is quite possible but you have to do certain codings in that also let's get into that and let's include those things first first and foremost I need an include file that is string I'll show you why I need string because my in my student class I have kept one of the data type as name which is having a data type of string data type so I've included that so I include the class okay you can put it anywhere uh, it is better if you can create a, another header file but I don't want to confuse you by creating another file including those files in this and all those things but it is I feel that is quite much much better way to do the coding but for time being to show you people I'm not doing those things it's not much difficult nothing else you have to do simply uh, create another file save it with dot cpp and put include them in the just put them in the same folder and include them I hope so you have understood it huh? just try it out it will be working fine ah, okay so here is my class the well, first thing I have created the class student it is having three uh, attributes that is roll number mark and name I have created default constructor I have created a constructor with arguments where I am passing the arguments that argument will be copied to my normal attributes so I am having a set data I am having a display there is nothing uh, you can say difficult or something to be explained in this all those things now I need an operator here and I've included the C out operator also now what why I need these two operators very common thing 
uh, I'll explain those things but we, let's get into this and then you'll understand so first of all like the integer array I have to create an array for student also so I've created an array for student which is of size 3 I've included I've created three objects into that that is the first object which is having value as 5 uh, are, sorry roll number as 5 name as Vikas and marks as 20 similarly I've created second student which is whose roll number is 10 Vikram and 50 marks and again a student with 1 Anil and 90 marks so array is ready of size 3 I'm calling display method okay so display is my generic okay not a problem it says fine I'll do it array 2 is of student type so let's get into display method what will happen now so I comes here so t is of student type so t becomes here student all the value of uh, array will be copied array 2 will be copied into this array size is of 3 not a problem for loop will be rotated i is equal to 0 i less than 3 i plus plus c out array of i array of i means indirectly i'm telling him to give me an output of student at zero position now this is not possible because student class object is a user defined object you can directly say c out if you want to see out some user defined obj or obj at zero position you have to overload the c out operator or the output operator okay so first and foremost to work with this generic one i have to overload it so i went downstairs in the student class i have created my own op i have overloaded the operator I'm saying simple this is nothing I'm special I'm doing I hope so you know the how to overload the output operator friend o stream reference operator operator symbol o stream and uh, m reference c c out student and obj simply I'm saying obj dot roll number obj dot name and obj dot marks I'm simply saying and I'm returning it so uh, by doing that much now when I say to see out array of i maybe if it is an array of integer float or even if it is a student it can still now be able to do the see out so basically doing this purpose i have overloaded that now you will say fair enough for that that is okay now why then you require the less than or greater than operator to be overloaded in my student class let's get into this now here also what happens array 2 value will be copied from here the 3 will be copied and it will goes to my bubble sort okay now let's get into my bubble sort array 2's value will be copied to here size is 3 not issue I'm rotating the loop fine as and when I come here now the, again the problem comes because here I'm saying array at I, I position less than array at J position so I'm not doing some array position I'm basically doing obj1 less than obj2 now if you see this thing if you see in a operator overloading chapter this topic you'll say oh yes sir less less than or greater than operator is you're, you're using in front of the object so you have to uh, overload that particular operator okay so I simply so it requires in my student class to overload that operator so I went here okay so I created a friend integer operator greater than student obj1 comma student obj2 so by doing the greater than operator overloading that as and when that particular statement that means as and when it gets into this particular code with the student class object it simply calls my operator overloading so it comes here copies the both objects array objects into obj1 and obj2 in my i have kept as my in my student class is having three attributes i'm only concentrating right now on roll number you can concentrate on marks as per your requirement you can concentrate on that particular attribute i'm simply creating integer rel equal to zero obj1 if obj1's roll number is greater than obj2's roll number then i'm simply returning uh, i'm setting rel as one and i'm returning that particular value so it will come to know that okay that particular object is greater than that or not okay then the rest all will work in a normal way you don't have to make any changes in your sorting methods you simply need to do additional task in your student class so similar task you have to if you want to do for some other class you have to do that only I hope so you have understood what I want to say uh, so in this session we have seen why we need an operator overloading uh, I mean sorry the template with the help of an array what advantages gets into that we have seen uh, the three methods what I have created my bubble sort method my swap method and my display method what are the purpose I have shown you I have shown you an example where I have, I have um, 
have sorted the integer array, I have sorted the float array, and I have sorted the student array. Let's run the program so you get an idea where exactly it's not working or not. I am have done the sorting on based on roll number. If you can see my first attribute, the student is having five. Uh, Vikas and 20, 10, Vikram, 50, 1, Anil and 90. Let's see what I am getting afterwards after doing the sorting concept. Compiling is compiled. Okay, the these two are we are not concerned. Uh, student array. Initially it was 5, Vikas, 20, 20. This is fine. Now after sorting, if you see roll number 1, Anil and 90, he came into picture then comes 5 because he is the second one and then comes the roll number 10 so it is being sorted you can see that not a single change has been made only student class required cha uh, required changes have been made and still works for any data type I have been passing I hope so you have understood the concept okay if you have any queries you can write a comment or else you can post a mail to me at gmail.com. thank you have a nice day